Hello and welcome back to Kickstart. In this video, we're not going to be breaking the fourth wall, we're going to be making them. As in this video, we're going to be going through creating and adjusting our walls in our Markerbelm toolbox. I'm Ludwig from Markerbelm and let's kickstart this wall down. Alrighty, and here we are back in our Kickstart project, ready to start drawing up some walls. But before we draw up our walls, we can actually set up a default size and thickness of those walls before we draw them in. So to do that, we're going to go straight to Toolbox Setup and to Wall Setup. And from here you can set up some defaults for your walls, your default wall thickness or your default wall height. It's through here that when you set up those parameters in here, your walls are going to come in at those set parameters. In my case, a 152 mil thick wall and a 2400 high ceiling. You can also set up some defaults for your dimension distances from those walls as well, but I'm gonna leave them be for the time being. Now to actually access where your walls are drawn, we're gonna go straight to the draw tab where most of our drawing needs and purposes are going to be. And within your draw tab, you have several sub tabs. You've got a draw room components tab, a draw products tab to say the least. Now, if you click on those sub tabs, you can access the different products within those sub tabs. For my walls, they are back in my draw room components, right at the top here. Now you can see there's an image of a wall and it's exactly this image that we need to set our attention to. We're gonna right click on this image over here and it's gonna give us two options. It's gonna give us pick point to draw a wall and select polyline path for wall. I'm going to start with the first one for the time being. So I'm going to click on him and you can see in my command line, he's asking me to enter a point, meaning specify a point on your screen that you would like your wall to start from. So I'm going to click right over here with a left click. Now you can see that once I left click, a yellow checkered line will appear. Now this is going to tell me which direction my wall is going to extrude to. Now you can also see that it's moving in any 360 direction, but when I get to a 90 degree angle, a green line will appear. This is called polar tracking, and this is gonna help me make sure my lines are nice and straight. And this is achieved by making sure that this little symbol down below over here is hard blue. Alternatively, right next to him, a little 90 degree line called ortho mode is also useful in this situation. Because if I click on him, I can now only move in a 90 degree direction. No chance of accidentally skewing off your 90 degrees and have your walls come in an angle. However, me personally, I'm gonna leave my polar tracking on. So I'm gonna find that nice green line, move my mouse in a direction that I want my wall to extrude to, and next I'm gonna type in what length my wall needs to be. In this case, I'm gonna make it a nice hearty 6,000 mil. And then you can see there's a white line now appearing. And that white line is pretty much telling me as soon as I hit enter, my wall is gonna be this length over here. Now I can move my mouse in a different direction and create a return. Same way, by moving my mouse in the direction I want my return to be and typing in what that length is gonna be. In this case, I'm gonna make him 3,000 mil. Enter. And once I'm done, you can hit enter one more time. And lo and behold, in all its majesty, my walls, my beautiful, beautiful walls. Now, I'm gonna throw in some movement as well, because as you can see, I'm looking at it from a top view, but you can actually move around in this model space by using one of the most useful tools known to men, this guy, right over here. Now this guy, I like to call Mr. Wheelie. It's just a little wheel on your mouse so you can sort of scroll up and down to obviously smooth zoom in or zoom out of your screen. But if you click on it down, you should hear a click. And that click is going to be useful in this situation because when I click down and hold on my mouse, I can now pan around my view. Now, and this is the fun part, if you hold shift and press down on that wheel, you can also move around in a 3D view. Alternatively, you can also use this guy over here. Now this happy chappy is my view cube. And if I click on corners of my view cube, I can go and look in that corner. Click on a face and you can rotate to that face. The arrows let you switch faces 
as well along your cube and you have these arrows here to rotate along your view. Now I've shown you how to add in walls through option number one, pick points, but I'm going to show you option number two. But in order to use that, I need to first draw a polyline on my screen. Now I'm going to use this blue pen over here and this second option over here to draw a polyline. Alternatively, you can use this option over here if you have these ribbons set up. But I'm going to use this guy over here because I like it. He's fun. He's cool. Click on him over here. I'm going to press on Mr. Wheelie to move my screen over here. And I'm going to click on this point over here. And same way that I drew my wall, I'm going to move my mouse in a direction that I want my line to extrude to. I'm going to go here and same as my wall, I'm going to type in that distance. In my case, three meters. Now, I'm going to show you one of the advantages to drawing a polyline first, and that's arcs. You can actually draw arced or different degreed walls as well. So if I want to draw an arc along this direction over here, you can see my command line is now giving me a few options to choose from. One of those is arc. So I can click on arc here and you can see, oh, there's a nice happy arc for me to draw. Now I'm just going to type in the width of that arc. I'm going to make him two meters. And you can see he wants to draw another arc, but I'm not going to draw another arc. I'm just going to hit enter to end my polyline. Now with my polyline all drawn up, I can go back to my wall over here and right click and select polyline path for my wall. Click on him here, click on that polyline, and you can see my wall extrude along that polyline. Again, if I hold shift and press Mr. Wheelie, there is that curved wall over here. I'm going to go back to a top view and I'm going to go through wall directions because depending on how you draw your wall is going to be depending on which side of your line or which side of your extrusion your wall is going to draw up on and in conjunction with that on which side of the wall that your cabinets are going to be automatically placed on. So I'm going to do a bit of an experiment. I'm going to draw two sets of point lines. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to draw one point line from the bottom left to the top right. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to make this guy here two meters and this guy this way also two meters. Now at the same time, I'm going to draw another set of point lines, except I'm going to draw one from the right to the bottom left, almost in an anti-clockwise motion. So I'm going to go here, same thing, two meters and down this way, another two meters. Enter one more time, and there are my two sets of point lines, looking the same, but drawn in two different ways. Now, when I draw my wall and select point line for path, I'm going to select this wall over here. And you'll notice that my wall has come in on the left-hand side of my point line, which means that my cabinets are going to be drawing along this side here, on the inside of my wall. Now, if I do that same thing, Right click, select polyline path for wall, but this time select this one, you will notice that's coming along the right hand side, meaning that my cabinets are going to be drawn along the outside of my wall. This is the difference between drawing clockwise or anti-clockwise. It's going to change how your cabinets are going to be sitting on your walls. Now, I've got a lot of walls here. To be honest, a little bit too much for my liking. So I'm going to delete some of these. To delete your walls, you want to go to your Modify tab down below here, and you have options for your walls. One of them is Erase. Click on M, and I'm going to click on my walls over here, just left clicking to delete those walls. I'm going to hit Enter once I've selected the walls. It's going to ask me, are you sure you want to delete them? And I'm going to say, heck yes. It's still going to leave my AutoCAD lines here, but to delete the lines, now, since I've drawn these through AutoCAD, I'm going to use my blue fingerprint and I'm going to use this erase over here. Not this one, but the one under my blue fingerprint. And same thing, I'm just going to click, click, and so when I'm finished. Now, onto this fellow over here. Now, we're not just set, we're not just stuck with pretty low lines here. We can do a lot more with this guy. In fact, we can even change his size, we can change his length. We can even add doors and windows to it. So to do that, we're going to stick to our modify room components 
and we're gonna click on properties. And from there, we're gonna click on this wall over here. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna get a pop-up come up. And this going over here is what we call product prompts. And product prompts pretty much helps us drive how our product or how our walls for that matter are going to be drawn, what's gonna be added to them, etc. So you can see here in my product prompts, I've got my width, which I've set at six meters. I've got my height, I've got my thickness as well. So if I change this particular wall's height to say 2300, hit okay. Well, it's not gonna make much difference here in my top view. So I'm gonna go ahead and do what I did before, shift and Mr. Wheelie. And you can see one of those walls is not like the other. But I can always go back into him by going back to my modified room components properties, click back on the line of my wall and switch him back to 2400. Now, while we're on this page as well, we have a couple of tabs up the top here. We have obstructions where we can add bulkheads or columns, but I wanna go to door options because I wanna actually add a door on this wall over here. So I'm gonna click on him. I'm gonna to go to this drop down list. I'm gonna say how many doors I want on this wall. Just the one and a lot more options have popped up for my door. I'm not gonna play around with them too much, but I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna see how he looks. Well, he's looking quite fancy to be perfectly honest. I like how he looks. And I can also change whether it's lines or whether it's an actual 3D solid. To do that on your top left of your model space, you've got this little text over here called 2D wireframe. If you actually click on him and go to conceptual or hidden or anything for that matter, you can also change the view of your model. To change it back to wires, we're gonna go back to conceptual and switch it back to wireframe. And there you have it, your first set of walls on this screen, waiting for some cabinets to sit on there and ride off into the sunset together or some other sort of romantic analogy you could use. I don't know, I can't think of anything else. Anyway, thank you so much once again for watching. I'm Ludwig from Markermolm, and I hope you all take care of yourselves and have a wonderful day.